Whoa, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane It's quite go get it like me Whoa, please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah Alright everybody, what is up? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are cracking back into the top 100 greatest players of all time at number 11, believe it or not. This is my 90th reaction of this series. It's been a mission. I have enjoyed it, but don't ask me to remember every single player's name because I won't. <laughs> Maybe I should have started at 50. I don't know. But I'm glad I started at 100. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've put a lot of effort into this. My editor, Dustin, I want to give you a quick shout out. I mean, you've put a, put a lot of effort into this and um, together, you know, we've been able to create this series and um, put it out in a timely fashion. So, I hope everyone's enjoyed. We're going to roll the intro and I'll see you back here to watch Ronnie Lott, number 11 on the top 100 players of all time. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is. Okay, guys, it's time to watch Ronnie Lott. Player that has more influence on me than anybody I've ever met. And he's truly a blessing in my life. It's Ronnie Lott. As I'm talking about Ronnie Lott. He was my roommate, and honestly, I always, uh, um, in a sense, feel like I was probably the luckiest guy alive to be roomed with him. In another way, Marcus Allen was also the unluckiest man alive. Recruited by USC as a defensive back, he went from lining up next to Ronnie Lott to lining up across from him in practice. He took out his uh, ambition and aspirations and hit on hope being one of the greatest ever uh, that played a game, you know, on me. Lott made Swiss Army knives jealous of his versatility. He made 10 Pro Bowls by mastering both corner positions. I must say, I've never, I've never heard that uh, analogy before. <laughs> about Swiss Army knives and someone's versatility. It's a good one. I'll keep that in the, in the bank. In addition to free and strong safety. You look at all the interceptions that he's got. He always saw the ball. Eh. Give it to me. He was a destroyer. I think he oh, realized that you shit. Know, that would have hurt. Play this game at the level and to be I want to watch that tackle again. What did the running back think? He was a destroyer. He gets it. He feels like he's just going to go behind his... Oh, number 27, by the way. My favourite number. He's going behind his... Uh, his uh, blocker there. <laughs> at the last minute, he, he sees behind him, he sees this fucking monster, Ronnie Lott, coming for him. He tries to step back inside. It's too late. He gets smashed. To really play this game at the level and to be recognized as one of the best ever, you have to have a little bit of craze inside you. When you go play the game of football, it's a violent game. Can you be psychotic and yet under control? Can you be neurotic and yet under control? You know what, man? After seeing this, this is actually the first time, I'll be honest, this is the first time watching film, seeing what someone's doing, that has actually made me think, you know what, maybe I want to be on defense. Maybe defense would be the better option. Lining people up, knowing that you can go in as, because like, in rugby, you can't, like, it's not so fun on defense in rugby, because, geez, you can get injured. I mean, your shoulder does not have any padding. You go in there hard on someone, hit them in the wrong place, you're going to smash your shoulder, okay? But if you've got those pads, I mean, I know it doesn't take away all of the impact and all of the injury risk, but God, it's got to, you know, lessen it somewhat. And um, I just think lining people up, throwing everything you have into it and hitting them would be 
a feeling like no other. And it would be a feeling completely different to being like a running back or a receiver and trying to get past someone. Like it, it's, come to think of it, as an offensive player, you've got the ball in your hand. Every single person on that field just wants to knock your fucking head off. Just like Ronnie Lott did. I don't know whether I want to have that coming at me. <laughs> Maybe I'll be on defense. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll see. But like I said, man, I just had to tell you that this was the first time, just after seeing him make all these hits, I'm thinking, man, maybe it is a better option to be on defense. Get him! Bang! He wanted to hurt you. And again! He wanted to hurt your family that was listening. <laughs> he, he wanted the entire family to be upset and worried. I mean, that's just the way he played. He would sacrifice his body. That's what you gotta do, too. You gotta sacrifice your body. You do. All in the name of the gang. I think it was a Timmy Newsom. I was trying to tackle him. Unfortunately, his helmet kind of smashed my finger against my shoulder pad. I had to go see the doctor so he could repair it. He says, well, look, one of your bones is missing in the finger. I chose to get the finger amputated so I could play. How many of us would uh, cut off the tip of our finger in order to continue playing the season? I think he would be the only one that would do it. Just you would. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> In 10 seasons with the 49ers, Lot won eight division titles. He left his mark for four Super Bowl winners. Naturally, it was a wealth. <laughs> He won Everybody four Super Bowls? Everybody. Damn, it's great, isn't it? He is a legend of the game. Not just a guy who played, he's what the game is all about. We're all about legends here. Ronnie is the heart and soul of the National Football League. Been cool, Marcus. Should remember his name 150 years from now. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to we're going to quickly look at uh, a bit of history here. We're going to go. I want to see those four Super Bowls. I did not realize that the 49ers won four Super Bowls in a row. Not in a row, surely. He's 59, he went pick number 8, round number 1 of the 1981 NFL Draft. He played for the Niners from 81 to 90, the Raiders from 91 to 92, the Jets from 93 to 94, the Chiefs from ni in 95, and back to the 49ers in 95. So it was a 15-year span. Here we go, four Super Bowl champion. Four-time Super Bowl champion. Shit, man. Is that why he's in this list? So, in his 10 years with the 49ers, Lott helped them win 8 division titles, as we heard, and 4 Super Bowls in the 81, 84, 88, and 89 season. He is only one of 5 players that were on all 4 1980s 49er Super Bowl wins. So there was 5 players. The other 4, here we go, quarterback Joe Montana, linebacker Keena Tummer, I don't know him, cornerback Eric Wright, Eric Wright, don't know him, and wide receiver Mike Wilson. Nah, don't know him. <laughs> Unless they're on the top in the top ten players of all time, which I doubt they will be. In fourteen NFL seasons, he recorded eight point five sacks and sixty three interceptions, and he played as a linebacker. Is that right? Defensive back, yeah. But he still had eight point five sacks, sixty three interceptions, which he returned for seven hundred and thirty yards and five touchdowns. That's over ten yards per reception. Uh, per interception. He recovered 17 fumbles, returned them for 43 yards, and gained 113 yards on kickoff returns. Huh. Well, Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott. What an absolute legend. And he comes in at number 11 
on the list. The next video is Dick Butkus. We've looked at Dick Butkus before. He's another legend. They're all going to be legends. The top 10. I haven't even looked at the top 10 yet. I'm so excited to see who's in the top 10. And I hope you guys are too. So for now, we're going to stop there. If you have enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. In the next video, we're looking at Dick Butkus. 10 more to go, people. 10 more. I will see you then.